My name is Adrian Salguero, and I started my PhD in computer science here at UC San Diego in fall of 2018. I just finished my fourth year as a PhD student, and now I'm entering my fifth year. My parents were originally from Michoacan, Mexico, and they came to the United States uh, before I was born. So I was born here in the U.S. I grew up in a small city just outside of downtown Los Angeles called Southgate. And growing up, it was very predominantly Latinx. So I grew up in a heavy uh, Latinx community. Uh, most of my friends were either Mexican or from Central America. So it was, a, it was definitely a, a very <laughs> Latinx uh, experience growing up. Growing up, my parents were very supportive of me getting a good education. Uh, so they made sure that, you know, I went to school, that I was, you know, getting my homework done, that I was, you know, just being a good student. You know, they'd come with me to the parent-teacher conferences. They'd make sure that I'd be getting to school on time, that uh, I wasn't, I guess, getting into, into trouble uh, both inside and outside of school. So they were, they were very, very supportive on just keeping me in, on track, making sure that I just got a, real, a good education uh, because they saw the, the value of you know, doing good in school because that just opens up a lot more opportunities uh, down the line. Uh, like for context, they worked a lot in factories, um, and so they saw that like an education can kind of help you get, you know, better jobs that, you know, pay more and just come with like a higher quality of life. I didn't know what computer science was. Um, I'd say until I was in undergrad, I, I was exposed to a class in high school called Exploring Computer Science, and but we did very you know basic things, you know things that you wouldn't necessarily do in an intro computer science class at a university. And so when I finally got to university and decided to try computer science because of that class in high school. Uh, computer science just looked like something that was different, something that was exciting. And growing up, you know, throughout high school, people are saying, you know, computer science jobs, you know, they pay well, it's the future. Uh, so that's kind of also excited me to want to pursue it, even though I didn't fully understand what I was getting myself into. Um, and so that's kind of how I started or why I started taking computer science classes um, when I got it to undergrad. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it was difficult. It was definitely a difficult transition to go into undergrad without kind of this background in computer science that I personally, I felt that a lot of students in my classes already had. So it, it was, it was intimidating. It was, it was going into these classes, uh, not really, you know, sure if this is what it is I wanted to do um, as a major. And also, you know, overhearing other students, you know, saying things like, oh, this is so easy, or I've done this before. Um, and all the while, while you're, while you're hearing those things, you're like struggling to understand the material uh, and just having a, a tough time kind of getting through those, those early classes. But, you know, I don't, I don't want to paint that as all just like negative because, you know, it, it, was, it was very difficult. It's very challenging. And I had to go to a lot of, you know, office hours, lab hours, tutor hours, just so... I f just so I can learn the material. But, you know, once I learned the material, once, you know, I got through some of the earlier classes, which were, you know, some were obviously more difficult than others, um, you know, you start kind of building 
that confidence. You start making friends. You start kind of seeing the same professors and kind of understanding what their like teaching style is or what to expect from them. Uh, you hear from older students about classes that you know what should you expect, how to prepare to for those classes to make sure you're successful. So definitely the earlier years were more challenging, um, but I'd say you know finding ways to meet other people, build those support networks, reaching out for help when when you need it, uh, be it to friends or to TAs or to the instructor or to tutors, um, definitely helped a lot in, in kind of getting through uh, the program. What interested me in, in applying to graduate school at UCSD, um, so it was two things. Uh, one of them was getting research experience um, at my undergrad. So I worked with the Treehouse Cancer Initiative, which allowed me to apply the things that I've learned in my computer science classes to kind of a grander um, like research problem. So what we did is we worked a lot with cancer data that came from actual patients, um, and we had, you know, we analyzed the data and we provided. Uh, kind of suggestions to physicians as to what potential treatments could be used to help these patients. And so that was one experience. The other one was actually here at UC San, at UC San Diego, where I worked with uh, Dr. Beth Simon, who's a, who's a faculty member in the Department of Education on one of her computer science education projects. And that was like an eight week summer program. I really enjoyed, again, using what I've learned in my classes to just tackle this other, this like greater research problem and to actually do something or create something that can be used to you know, help instructors um, in their computer science classes. And so those two experiences just really you know, really excited me as to what I can do with what I've been learning and how I can apply it to, you know, potentially give back and do something impactful that can help others. Graduate school has like a lot of flexibility in, in terms of schedules, you know, for uh, depending on, you know, what your lab is, what your project is. So definitely like my average day may not you know, be representative of a lot of other people's average day in, in grad school. But for me, it kind of shifts based on the quarter, depending on like what research projects I'm on or what research meetings that I have to do. But for the most part, uh, an average day for me kind of involves uh, doing some research meetings either with my advisor or with other graduate students or even undergrads who are part of the project, uh, who are also kind of wanting to get that extra research experience while you know, being an undergraduate student. So we'll have research meetings, you know, we'll discuss uh, potential ideas, next steps, uh, things we need to complete. So my research focuses a lot on computer science education on how we can better teach and support students in the computer science programs. And so we focus a lot on, you know, just, you know, creating evaluation tests or uh, sometimes we'll interview students or faculty um, based on whatever our research project is. Uh, aside from that, if you're taking courses as a graduate student, you also have, you know, times when you're in lecture or doing homework or going to discussion sections. Uh, but once I was complete, once I was finished with all of my coursework, a lot of it is time that I spend either reading or writing up a paper, uh, editing a paper. Um, so it's, yeah, like it's a lot of reading, it's a lot of meetings, um, but it's also a lot of interactions with other students, uh, be they like in your program or you know students that you're you're talking to as part of a project. My experience as a graduate student uh, compared to that of my undergrad, 
Uh, definitely a lot more free time, <laughs> I'd say. Uh, as a graduate student, there's a point where you're not taking classes anymore and it's solely research. And so that usually means that you have a lot of free time to spend however it is you want. Uh, I mean, hopefully it's a productive way of spending your time because you don't want to you know, waste the day not getting work done. And I mean, there are going to be days where you'd get more work done than other days. And, and I think that's just the reality of being in graduate school. Um, but definitely it's forced me to get better at managing my time and making sure that I have specific time blocks, you know, that are focused on me doing certain things, uh, be it reading, be it having meetings, um, be it just getting general work done for, for my projects. In graduate school, you have a chance to just interact more with faculty members. I, I think as an undergrad, it was rare for me to really have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with an uh, instructor, you know, unless it was in office hours. But as a graduate student, I feel that's something you encounter a lot more because your advisor or other instructors in your department you know, as you get, as you progress through the graduate program, I think they go from being instructors to more of colleagues in your field um, that you collaborate with, that you have, that you do projects with, um, that you just talk about research with. Um, sometimes you'll just have uh, a coffee, like a coffee lunch with uh, another instructor. So it's it's definitely, definitely those, those, um, those interactions are very, are, are very uh, engaging and are very fulfilling. Just figuring out how to properly, how to properly allocate your time to make sure that you're getting everything that you need to get done. Um, what I like to do is I like to have weekly meetings with my advisor just so I can have these kind of weekly deadlines that I meet and kind of keeps me on track from, you know, if I only met my advisor once a month, who knows how much work I'd actually get done um, and how much I'd be cramming in like the last week. Another thing, and I feel it's, it's talked about, but I, I think it needs more, I guess, light shine on it was just kind of this idea this feeling of, you know, the imposter phenomena, the feeling like you don't belong, uh, the stress that kind of comes behind it. You know, even though I graduated with a bachelor's in CS, even though the school accepted me and I was kind of put in this, you know, really great research lab, um, there's still sometimes those feelings of like, oh, am I good enough? Uh, do I belong here? Am I doing, are the things that I'm doing the right things? In, in terms of kind of overcoming that, I, I think what helps a lot is just kind of keeping track of, you know, your accomplishments as you go through the program. Um, even if it's like passing a class, um, getting, you know, progress made on your research project. Um, and I think even just having casual conversations with other people who are probably, like I said, are also likely feeling that way. Um, I think that's just, it's, it's a thing that I feel doesn't have a cure for, for lack of a better word, uh, but it's definitely something that I, I think can be managed. So what's helped me navigate grad school here at UCSD, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been multiple things. So one of the things has been kind of getting to know other people in the department. So older graduate students, a lot of times, you know, when you're accepted into a lab or you join a lab in, here, you're going to have graduate students who are older than you and who've probably, you know, likely have gone through what it is that you're currently going through, be it classes, uh, like your first research project, you know, publishing a paper, different things like that. So I think definitely talking to these older graduate students, um, asking them, you know, how did you navigate, you know, this thing? 
uh, how'd you, how did you manage writing your first paper? Or how did you manage leading your first project? They'll have that experience to share with you and perhaps even help you um, or perhaps even validate the things that you're feeling like, oh, yes, I, I also felt like nervous or I also didn't know what I was doing. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing that helps me navigate is just building a social social network, uh, be it of friends or colleagues. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in your department. So I have a group of friends that I spend time with outside of school, and then I also have a group of friends that I spend time you know, inside of school. And so I think that also is really important because sometimes you just want – you don't want your whole life to be graduate school or your whole life to just be school. Um, otherwise, I, I feel like you'd, you'd burn out and you would just end up doing worse. Um, and so I think having that support network both inside and outside of school is really, really valuable because sometimes you just need a break and sometimes you just want to go out and not think about school and do something fun. And I think the third thing... Uh, that's helped me is a lot of is, is having a good relationship with my advisor. So I'm very grateful uh, for with the two advisors that I have because they're moments where I've felt, you know, that I was struggling with research. I felt that I can, you know, openly, you know, bring up, you know, issues that I've been having in terms of work. Um, and they've been very supportive in kind of helping me to address those issues and helping me with just being a, a better student and a better researcher. Um, so I think those, those three things have really helped me kind of just navigate through, through grad school. So if you're interested in pursuing graduate school, uh, be it a master's program or a PhD program, um, well, first I'd you know, research, you know, the, the commitments of either of those programs. So find out what it is you have to do for a master's versus a PhD and figure out which one's right for you. And a lot of times that can be just self-research, like reading stuff on the internet. Um, it could also be things like reaching, talking to other graduate students uh, in the, either like in the PhD or in the master's program. Aside from that, I'd say also try to get some sort of research experience as an undergraduate student, be it through a summer program or there's, pro there's programs sometimes at universities that help students or match students with labs for you know a quarter or longer where they get to work on a research project that's handled by or that's supervised by uh, a faculty member. So kind of getting that experience and seeing what are things in your field that excite you or that at least you're interested in learning about more, uh, I'd say that's a good first step in deciding if graduate school is something you want to pursue or not. I'd also say be open to learning in your classes. So sometimes, especially like your early classes, you have to learn the basics. And sometimes... Sometimes the basics aren't the most exciting thing <laughs> about your, your field. Um, I can say that about you know computer science. Sometimes it's difficult to kind of see the grander picture of what computer science, what you can do with computer science in those earlier classes. But kind of learning, understanding like those are just the basics and the basics open you up to potentially doing something that's more interesting. Um, for me with computer science, you know, it's not just computer sci science isn't just software engineering or, you know, like writing software for these like big tech companies. You know, computer science can be applied to the healthcare industry. You can do computer science education, which is more of like a teaching side to it, which is, you know, what I'm doing. Uh, computer science is big with you know, data is a huge thing in computer science, and there's data for different areas. I know there are there's data sets um, for like entertainment industries. There's data sets for like politics. Uh, so there's different avenues that computer science can, you know, go. T you can apply computer science to different avenues, but it's not always clear at first. So I'd say be open to it. Be open to 
what it is that you can potentially do with whatever it is you're studying. And a lot of times you can, you know, reach out to TAs or an instructor during office hours and just remain curious as to what it is, what can I do, or I want to know more about this topic, or can, how can you apply this topic to, to you know, other issues. Um, and then that, you know, that could potentially be something that you do for graduate school, because in graduate school, you pursue a research, a research problem, especially as a PhD student. Um, I have to work, you have to pursue a research problem and finding out what those potential problems are uh, can definitely, you know, can definitely make you decide if graduate school is right for you or not.